Chapter 40 of Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them Recording by Alex Karaz Your Psychic Powers and How to Develop Them by Harold Carrington Chapter 40 Materialization Materialization means the process of rendering solid or material, for a longer or shorter time, bodies through which disembodied spirits may function and communicate. Materialization usually occurs at seances in which a group of people are gathered together, and rarely or never when the medium is alone. The reason for this is probably that the necessary conditions are lacking, these being chiefly the lack of sufficient vital energy, which is drawn from the circle by the medium and utilized for the purposes of materialization. The Marvels of Materialization Many factors play a part in this mysterious phenomenon. Considered from the physical or material point of view, there is the reality of the phantom, and from the psychological or mental point of view, there is the mind of the materialized entity to account for. If we were always sure that the materialized figure were really the person it claimed to be, this latter difficulty would be overcome. But as we shall see later, there are many objections to the simple view of the case in all instances, and thus the problem is rendered more complex. From the purely physical point of view, the phenomena of materialization are the most baffling and the most mysterious in the whole realm of spiritualism. A few minutes before, nothing existed in the cabinet save the entranced medium. Now, there is a solid, tangible form possessing all the properties and appearances of matter, often having solid flesh and bones just as a human being would. The flesh being warm and lifelike, the hand possessing nails, hair, etc., like an ordinary hand, and being apparently composed of cells and tissues, such as any material body would be composed of. How account for this? It is surely one of the most bewildering and incredible facts in nature. The Necessary Factors to Ensure Success From the point of view of spiritualism and psychic development, many factors play a part. There is first of all the physical body of the medium, secondly his vital magnetism, Thirdly, the magnetism of the sitters forming the circle. Fourthly, magnetism from disembodied spirits, which mingle together and help to create the phantoms that appear at seances. The vital energy which seems to be drawn from the circle, and chiefly from the medium, during the seances is utilized or manipulated by the disembodied spirits, who build up by its aid the materialized form we see before us. This is a very difficult and complicated process, and not all spirits are competent to do this. For this purpose, what are known as spirit chemists are often employed, those who possess the knowledge of how to build up these forms. In the deepest stages of trance, when the medium is unconscious, the communication through materialized figures becomes clearer and clearer, and the forms more dense and material. This is true of many psychic phenomena. The deeper the trance, the better the results obtained. Etherealization and Transfiguration In the lighter stages of trance, however, only portions of the figure may develop, such as hands, faces, etc., or very shadowy and vaguely defined outlines of human forms. These latter are not, strictly speaking, materialized, but are known as etherealized forms. They are less solid than the materialized figures, and it is often possible to pass the hand and arm through one of these figures without disturbing it. In the case of the materialized figure, on the other hand, they are just as solid and tangible as human form, and it would be impossible to make any other solid object pass through any part of them. In many cases, the physical body of the medium is more or less altered by the spirits without any other phantom being created. Such cases are known as transfiguration. When the figure created at the seance is not dense and fully formed, it does not possess either a complete or matured intelligence. It is not all there, so to speak, mentally or physically. How some forms are created. There is evidence to show that many of these forms are created by the will of the medium or by discarnate spirits, and that they are more truly thought forms than materialized spirits. Again, many of these figures are doubles or astral bodies belonging to living people who happen to appear at the seance or projections from discarnate spirits. In such case, the intelligence manipulating the phantom is not that of a mature spirit, but is a creation, so to speak, elaborated by the subconscious thoughts of the medium, 
or by the mentality of the sitters forming the circle. The psychic atmosphere created by the minds in this circle has, in other words, produced the mind of the phantom in the same way that the combined vital magnetism of the sitters has produced the material body of the apparition. How Materialization is Accomplished The process of materialization seems to be somewhat as follows. The vital energy being drawn from the sitters into the body of the medium, the latter projects it outward into space together with a large portion of his own vital energy, or it is drawn out by the operating intelligences. When in space, at a short distance from the medium's body, this vital energy is molded, so to say, into the shape of the materialized form. It is built up or created by the operating intelligences. Between this form and the medium's physical body, there exists a subtle connection, or rapport, which has been described as a thread or bond of union, though it is not a physical connection of any kind or one that has ever been detected. Yet that such a connection exists is proved by the phenomena of repercussion referred to in chapter 36, where it is shown that any injury done to the projected form reacted upon the body of the medium and left its mark upon it, just as though the physical form had suffered the injury. This is one of the most striking phenomena in the whole realm of spiritualism, and a case of this character is thus vividly described by the Venerable Archdeacon Colley in his address on spiritualism before the Church Congress which met in October 1905 and subsequently published by him in pamphlet form. He then said, He, the material phantom, seemed to be interested in everything around him, walked up and down the room, taking up various articles to examine them. As would be natural to one of ancient race now in the midst of modern environment. Presently he espied and brought from the sideboard a dish of baked apples, and I got him to eat some. Our medium was at this time six or seven feet away from the spirit form, and had not chosen to take any of the fruit, asserting that he could taste the apple the Egyptian was eating. Wondering how this could be, I with my right hand gave our abnormal friend another apple to eat holding a bit of white paper in my left hand outstretched toward the medium, when from his lips fell the chewed skin and core of the apple eaten by the Mahidi. Here it is before me now, after all these years, and this screwed up bit of paper for any scientist to analyze. In this instance, the phenomena of repercussion was very interestingly demonstrated. The method of the materialization of the figure was thus described by Archdeacon Kali in his lecture. How the figures are formed when, in expectation of a materialization, there was seen steaming, as from a kettle spout, through the texture and substance of the medium's black coat, a little below the left breast toward the side, a vaporous filament, which was almost invisible until within an inch or two of our friend's body. Then it grew in density to a cloudy something. There would then step forth timidly a figure, as did this little maiden. She was naturally a companion for others of our frequent psychic visitors. For as a cloud received one out of their sight, when the disciples at Bethany gazed on their ascending Lord, so as from a cloud thus inexplicably evolved from the medium, came our materialized friends, and vanished again to invisibility in a cloud, sucked back within his own body, when they were withdrawn from us, wistfully gazing on the mysterious departure and noting this or that particular phase of it within a few inches of the point of their inscrutable disappearance and the vanishment. The Clothes of Materialized Figures The question is often asked, how is it possible for spirits to become clothed? The old question of the clothes of ghosts being often raised among materialistic skeptics of the last century. The same question might be raised against the clothes of materialized figures, but there is a ready answer to this which fully explains it. Those who deny and ridicule the possibility of materialization of remnant, as well as bodies, might ask themselves the question, whence came the clothing which Christ wore after his resurrection? For we are distinctly told that the master's raiment had been parted among the Roman soldiery, and upon his cloak had they cast lots. This historical incident furnishes us with an illustration of the case in point, and the reality of this fact is amply borne out by many modern instances of a like character. How to begin your development In sitting for materialization, the medium should sit inside the cabinet 
which should not be too large so as to concentrate and focus the energy obtained from the circle. The medium should sit on a cane bottom chair sufficiently comfortable to afford perfect relaxation when the trance supervenes. How to begin your development. In sitting for materialization, the medium should sit inside the cabinet, which should not be too large so as to concentrate and focus the energy obtained from the circle. The medium should sit on a cane bottom chair sufficiently comfortable to afford perfect relaxation when the trance supervenes. At first, the medium should hold the hands of those in the circle, but after a time these may be released. The light should be almost totally extinguished for reasons given before in this book. It must be remembered that there are all kinds of light, visible and invisible. We also have infrared rays and ultraviolet rays, the former being below the lowest form of visible vibration and the latter above the highest. It is because red is so low on the scale of vibration that mediums employ it during the seance. Photographs may be taken by infrared and ultraviolet light. Light has a very disintegrating effect on these subtle forms and would doubtless serve to disintegrate many of the materialized forms upon their initial appearance. The medium should make his mind as blank as possible, holding only the central idea of self, and mentally call upon his spirit friends to help in the production of phenomena. Early Signs and Phenomena Among the initial sensations which the medium will experience are probably flashes of heat and cold, blackness before the eyes, in which possibly there may be specks of light dancing hither and thither, and the cobwebby sensation over the hands and face, which is almost invariable and very noticeable. Madame d'Esperance, a materializing medium of international fame, has stated that in her experience this cobwebby sensation was present on practically every occasion. Speaking of the phenomena and symptoms of the process, she says, If a few persons have gathered together in a half-darkened room, the emanations from their bodies can be seen by many, not necessarily clairvoyance. It appears as a slightly luminous haze about the head, shoulders, and sometimes the knees and feet. Frequently it gathers slowly at the fingers, increasing in density until it resembles a slight transparent film of slightly luminous cotton wool. This is often perceptible to the eyes of all, but it offers no resistance to the touch. By some force of attraction, either inherent or exerted upon it by some outside agency, this mass appears to mingle and draw together, to become more dense, and at this stage has been found to be decidedly perceptible to the touch. It resembles, as nearly as can be described, the gossamer web seen on trees and bushes on an early summer morning. The Sensation of Cobwebs and What It Means Many persons in a materialization seance are sensible of a feeling as of cobwebs being on their faces and hands. I have myself not only felt the sensation, but when brushing my face or hands have distinctly felt what seemed to be fine filaments of the gossamer which clung to my fingers. The attention of the sitters has been frequently drawn to this almost impalpable substance which has vanished as soon as the light has been brought near it. This emanation from the sitters in a seance is generally, if not always, accompanied by a sensation of chill or draft, similar to that felt by a person in a slightly feverish condition. The head will be hot, there will be a heavy throbbing in the temples. The hands, feet, and other parts of the body will be cold to the touch. The medium, by the exercise of his will, can at any time prevent manifestations. In fact, the opposition of any person in a circle will act as a hindrance to the work of the unseen operators. Why some forms resemble the medium. As a rule, when full materializations are accomplished, the medium is entranced so deeply that he cannot remember the process of the production of the forms. In the earlier stages of trance, the mind should be concentrated on the creation of forms of this character, but after it has reached a certain stage, you may safely turn over the process to your spirit friends. In some instances, the medium's double becomes detached from the body and appears to those forming the circle as a materialized figure, though it is not such in reality. If such a figure be photographed or closely examined, the striking resemblance to the medium is easily seen, though it is not the medium who may be seen entranced within the cabinet. Lack of knowledge of this fact has given rise to the false belief that in cases of this character, the medium himself was consciously personating the spirit. But the true explanation is that the double has been liberated during the seance and has thus appeared to the sitters as an independent being. 
The phenomena of materialization, as before said, are amongst the most interesting in the whole realm of the supernormal, and will well repay careful study and the prolonged experimentation on the part of the student. End of chapter 40. Recording by Alex Caraz.